A good friend of mine that I grew up with named Jason Worth, he uh, used to play baseball for the Philadelphia Phillies, and now he plays baseball for the Washington Nationals. Um, he had, uh, once I got cut in week six of 05, my son, my oldest son, Jacob, was born that following week. And I realized to myself that I had no income and I was waiting for the NFL to bring me back in order to get money back, uh, you know, to get money coming in again. And I felt like that was unacceptable. I couldn't rely on somebody else for money when I have another, another mouth that I'm responsible for for the rest of my life. So I, uh, I chose We Don't the NFL uh, and I, I went to corporate America and I designed and sold employee benefit packages. Well, I was there for about two years. Uh, while I was there, I started up a sports nutrition company uh, called Eden, Engineered and Designed Nutrition. Uh, since I knew Worth um, and Worth trusted me, um, I, I started up this company and I loved it. I, my, my main product was a recovery product. I reached out to Worth, asked him if he wanted to try it out. He said yes. I sent it to him and he loved it. He ended up uh, kind of like being our spokesperson for the product. Uh, and uh, I ended up leaving corporate America. And Worth called me up and said, hey, do me a favor. Uh, I'd like you to jump in this amateur MMA show uh, and, 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 and help sell some tickets in our hometown to our inaugural show. And I was like, well, I, I had nothing else better to do. I was running a gym. And I was like, sure, what the hell, why not? Never practiced MMA in my life. Never really I gave it some consideration, but never ever practiced on it or acted on it. I know Chris Idle and Jake O'Brien are from Indianapolis, and that's where I lived at at the time. So I Googled them, find out who their manager was. It happens to be the same guy named Ken Pavia. Ken um, uh, gives me the coach's phone number. The next day I'm in the gym, and I'm scrapping with Jake and Chris. And uh, I get injured, so I never, end up ending, I never ended up getting on Worth's show. But then six months later, I was on The Ultimate Fighter. And the Ultimate Fighter was uh, a really uh, stressful environment, stressful situation to be in. And it, it went down like I was the villain. I was the, the douchebag. I was the bad guy on the show. But I kind of felt like even before I went on the show, no matter how things go, if I get, you know, I'm likable. I, I've got a pretty outgoing, uh, gregarious personality. And if, um, and I've got a phenomenal vocabulary. And if, uh, you know, if I, if I went on the show and I was liked, cool, then I'll go ahead and be me. And if I go on the show and I'm the bad guy for any reason because I didn't get along with somebody or whatever, then I'll steal the show. I'll turn it on its ear. I've got the personality to do so, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. So um, I went on the show, and I ended up striking up a deal with a guy named Scott Junk um, that we were going to help each other through the first round. And as we helped each other through the first round, we had to share information and say, like, okay, look, you're fighting this guy, I'm fighting that guy. This is his secrets, this is what his weaknesses are, this is how we're practicing to beat you, and blah, blah, blah. Get each other through the first round, and once you get through the first round, all bets are off, we could fight each other the next day, and shit would be cool. Well, um, my, my team, I'm on Rashad Evans' team, and my team finds out who we're fighting, and uh, that night I go down and I tell Junk, hey, look, Junk, you're fighting this guy, I'm fighting this guy, this is a situation, blah, blah, blah. And then that motherfucker goes downstairs and throws me under the bus. Goes downstairs to my team and says, hey, look, Mitrion just spilled the beans and told me this and this and this and this. Um, and, uh, and I had no idea he did it. I told him it was at night. I told him I went to bed. Woke up in the morning to find out he threw me under the bus. And uh, there was like a, 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 I couldn't say on the show that, you know, we had already, we came to this agreement because like there's a confirmed with contestants policy, you know, that I would only make myself look even worse and I would be hated even worse. So I just had to, swallow it and be like, all right, fuck it, I'm the bad guy, I screwed up, you know, that's what I did, my fault. And, um, you know, then everybody hated me from that point on, so I was like, well, fuck it, I'll be the villain. If I'm already hated, I'll steal the show. And that's what I did. The notoriety from American football to MMA um, is, is, is 180 degrees different. Uh, no, in, in football, uh, there's 21 other guys on the field with you at the same time. You have masks and helmets and, uh, you know, you're, you're lost in a, in, a, in a myriad of other people. In MMA, it's, it's you, the other person, the ref and God, uh, and 8 million people watch you and see your nipples uh, and, and, and watch you get after it. You know, so and there's, there's, there's no comparison in between uh, notoriety and, 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 uh, and even like popularity wise, like, like individually, like fan base wise, uh, there's really no comparison to it. Uh, and, and you know, and people, can, people can identify with you so much more in MMA because there's so, many, there's so much more one-on-one -on -one attention and uh, interviews and, and, and you have trading cards of yourself and people can be like, oh, I watched that dude scrap for 15 minutes or that dude got his ass kicked by this guy and cheese or, or he molly about this person or whatever. Uh, so the fan base is, is totally different. And so coming for me, uh, you know, I, I was a, um, a long-haired white dude that was playing a pass rusher in the, in the NFL. Uh, I didn't really have that many fans, uh, except for my family. Uh, but now being in, uh, and once I was on Ultimate Fighter, I would probably say 85% of the population, uh, of the watching population despised me, just 
hated me. I was such a whiny bitch on that show. Uh, and it even bothered me to watch the role I was playing. And then now, like, I, I, there's been like a pretty large turnaround. I'd probably say that, you know, hopefully 51% of the viewing public likes me now. Uh, and uh, and I, I think it's been pretty positive from there. I think the evolution of MMA has gotten to the point where it does attract top-end talent from everywhere. Uh, and I, I think that MMA is a beautiful way of keeping you humble. Because once you think that you really are that good, somebody's going to come in and beat the brakes off of you. Whether it's in practice or it's in, uh, in a fight in front of 8 million people and your mom and dad and grandma are watching you get your ass kicked. Uh, it's it's going to find some way to humble you. I think that's a great way. And I think that's probably the one thing that really has slowed down the or, or hindered the progression of other mainstream athletes coming over to MMA is the fact that their ego can't handle getting its ass whooped. That's really, I think, the one thing that's really... I think a lot of guys love it. I talk to a ton of guys that love fighting, but a lot of them are like, dude, I, I couldn't get my ass whooped in front, of, in front of that many people. And that's the one pill you gotta swallow. That You know, it's, it, sooner or later, you're gonna go to the hospital and you're gonna get your ass kicked. That's what's gonna happen, and everybody you've ever known is gonna see it. Fighting is so mental. It's so mental. Um, and that if you're not, if you have any fraction of a doubt that you're going to win, you're probably going to get your ass kicked. Uh, and a lot of people get nerves, like they really get anxious and, and like they pace up back and forth. And like, like there's a couple of like really popular, really famous fighters that are wrecks before they fight. Like pacing up and down, back and forth, like, why do I do this? I do not want this. I don't want this job. Why don't I have a regular job? And they freak out before they go fight. Um, you know, and that doesn't happen in the NFL because there's so many other people to rely on and you can go point a finger and be like, well, that fat bastard over there didn't do his job and that's the reason why this happened and blah, blah, blah. Um, and in MMA, all you can do is be like, well, I just fucked up and got my ass kicked and that's all there is to it. Um, so it's a huge mental edge and it's a confidence thing. Um, so I'd say competitive edge wise, you know, like, a lot of things in football are one-on-one -on -one games, a corner versus a receiver, a middle linebacker versus a fullback, a, a, a D tackle versus a guard or a center, um, you know, a, a DN versus a, a, a tackle or a tight end. Um, you know, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles there, uh, but um, I, there's nothing like fighting because, like I said, it's, it's mano a mano, the referee, and God, and there's nobody else you can point a finger at. I think a lot of other athletes um, that are highly accomplished, NFL guys, Major League Baseball, hockey guys, stuff like that, I think they could do really, really well uh, physically. But I think the biggest hurdle for any of them is uh, the mental aspect, uh, the preparation, the all eyes on you. You can't point fingers at anybody else because if you lose, you got your ass kicked. Nobody else got your ass kicked for you. Uh, and uh, even if you didn't get the right coaching, well, dude, you better be you better be stubborn enough and tough enough to figure out some way to get your ass a victory. Um, and, and you can blame on your coaches afterwards, but I wasn't prepared enough for this, and I just had to go hood and you know and, and pull out haymakers until I won something. You know how to fight, so you can figure it out. And I think a lot of times people um, their egos aren't comfortable enough, or they're they're not comfortable enough in their own skin to accept the fact that they're going to get the living shit kicked out of them sooner or later, or five times in their career in front of everybody that's ever known them. So if they can do that, I think, it, I think it, a lot of people would be really successful uh, transitioning over. If not, then they don't stand a chance.